look at different equations of lines. And we'll talk about three different equations that we can use to represent a line. Our first equation is the point-slope form. And in point-slope form, I need two things. I'll need a point, which we'll call x1, y1. And we also need the slope, which is m. In that case, my formula for my line is y minus y1 equal to m x minus x1. As long as I have a single point and the slope, I will have an equation of a line using this formula. As an example, if we have a line with slope negative 2 and passes through the point 3, 4, well, my formula tells me I have y minus y1, which is 4, is equal to m, which is my slope, times x minus x1, which is 3. So now I have a formula for a line in point-slope form. Next, we'll look at a horizontal line containing the point 3, 4. Therefore, I have y minus y1, which is 4, is equal to m, which we don't quite have yet, x minus x1, which is 3. We need to know the slope of a horizontal line. Well, in general, a line does measure the steepness, and a horizontal line is completely flat. Therefore, it's not steep at all. It has zero steepness. And actually, the slope of a horizontal line is, in fact, zero. If we wanted to, we could rewrite this as y minus 4 equal to zero. And if I add 4 to both sides, I get y equal to 4, and this is the general form of a horizontal line. In our video discussing slope, we discussed a, that a vertical line is x equal to a number, while a horizontal line is y equal to a number. This time, I'm going to try to find the equation of a line passing through these two points. In order to use my point-slope form, I need a point, which I obviously have here, but I also need the slope, which I currently do not have. However, to find the slope, we just need two points. I'll call this first one x1, y1, the second one x2, y2. Formula for slope says y2 minus y1 is equal to x2 minus x1. This is negative 7 over negative 4, which is just 7 over 4. Now I can find the equation of the line. y minus y1 is equal to m x minus x1. And ultimately, it doesn't matter which one of these points you call x1, y1, and which one you call x2, y2. If we were to use the other point, I would have y minus negative 2 equal to 7 over 4 times x minus negative 1. And while these equations look very different, they're actually the same thing, and they represent the exact same line. Next, we'll look at slope-intercept form. And this is the second equation for a line that we have. Here we need two things. I need a slope, which we'll call m, and I need the y-intercept, which we will call b. Slope-intercept form is then given by y equal to mx plus b. And this is the general form that we tend to like lines in. When we use our point-slope form, we usually take another step to then solve for y. Let's consider this line, 3x minus 6y equal to 12. We want to put this into slope-intercept form. Essentially, I want to start by solving for y. 
so we'll subtract the 3x over. That leaves me with negative 6y on the left. The right has negative 3x plus 12. We can then divide everything by negative 6. On the left, I'm left with y. On the right, negative 3 divided by negative 6 is 1 half. And 12 divided by negative 6 is negative 2. Therefore, I now have this equation in slope-intercept form. The slope is given by the number in front of x, and my y-intercept is the other of these numbers. The general form of a line is given by ax plus by equal to c, where a and b are not both zero. It's possible to have one of them equal to zero. That's what gives us the equations for the horizontal and the vertical line. The real advantage of the general form over the other two forms has to do with vertical lines. Both my point slope and my slope intercept used a slope. However, for a vertical line, the slope is undefined. But this general form will still allow us to represent a vertical line properly. Here, our last example, we'll graph this general form. And the easiest way to graph something in the general form is using intercepts. If I let y be equal to 0, I'm given that 3x is equal to 12 which means that x must be equal to 4. So I cross my x-axis at 4. If I let x be equal to 0, I get that negative 6y is equal to 12. So y is negative 2. This is now my y-intercept. I can then connect the dots between these two points to get my line.